Good morning, stampers. This is Super Awesome Stamper Shirley Merker. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Wisconsin, USA. I actually live near Madison in the south part of the state. I am a couple hours north of Carol and Brian from their store in northern Illinois. I can see that Tanya is still live on my computer, but if you are refreshing your screen and you see my post, if you can add a comment or give me a thumbs up so that I know I'm in the right spot. Oh, Leia, you're watching. Okay, I am going live on my personal profile because I couldn't go live with my business profile this morning, which is super awesome stamper Shirley Merker, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Oh, Deborah is reacting to my post. And I'm going to bring myself up so I can see your comments. Uh, good morning, Shiloh from Arizona. Susan, good morning, Cheryl. Great. Okay, you can see me and you can see my workspace. So I'm just going to grab right into it. I can see my workspace is not the same space I'm seeing through my phone, but we're going to go right into it and adjust my camera stand as I go. Lori, hello from Nevada. Tina, Ohio. All right, thank you for joining me this morning. This morning, I am going to be sharing how to create these Starburst um, designs. It's perfect for the end of the catalog year and for Stampin' Up! This is the last month of our annual and spring mini catalog. I don't know about you, but I create a lot of scraps in my pile and I'm always looking for designs that use up the scraps. Now this technique is a little frustrating because you create little, small, tinier scraps from your scraps, but those I can certainly uh, throw away with little heartache. So I'm just showing you all the different styles. I offered Abigail Rose, Tea Boutique, and the Awash in Beauty patterns. I've got a couple of options up on my blog at superawesomestamper.com to make your purchases because Stampin' Up! Patches packages their designer series paper for customers, which means there are two sheets each of six patterns, usually in a pack. So it's not very conducive for demonstrators to create kits from. That That is why I always have to say in my post that patterns will be assorted from the packs that I offer. All right, Sandra is here from Virginia. Shannon from Madison, welcome. Nancy, that metallic paper is the rose gold. And in the rose gold packages, there are three different shines. So I couldn't tell you which. This one is a little more dull. This one is a little more shiny. And the third one is a little more dull as well. So in your kit, I would have included two sheets of the exact same design so that when you started cutting up your kits, you would have the same sheen on all your scraps. Hope that makes sense. All right, let me pull in the kit. And Renee, hello from California. Tina from Michigan. We're all over the United States. Sandra from Virginia, welcome. All right, so my kits ship two per envelope. Generally, this is what I mail them in, two per envelope. So if you do the two for a bundle or four for a bundle, you'll get several envelopes in your mailbox. And that's just because I can use that two ounce stamp per envelope and stuff the envelope as heavy as I can, up to two ounces, and as thick up to the quarter inch as I can. And I just pre-make those ahead of time and then ship them out as soon as you place your order. All right, inside your kit, you would have received, like I said, two pieces of the foil paper. And actually side by side, you can see there. this one is more shiny and this one is like more holographic. I can see the rainbow colors in that one. This is just my kit, like I said, because I just grabbed it and put it together this morning, but your kit should have two of the identical sheens on there. And then your kit would have included two pattern paper, pa or two pattern paper rectangles. I don't generally cut up your rectangles. I usually include large pieces because the more I cut up, the thicker that envelope gets and the more postage it is. So I have to keep that envelope under the quarter inch thickness. Deborah from Pennsylvania, Teresa from Texas. Uh, from Canada. Hello, Canada. Annie, I'm not sure. I didn't mail one out to Canada. I do have the international stamps. It costs me a little bit more, um, and I generally uh, don't get international, but because I have the international friends, I already have the, those international forever postage 
um, stamps in-house. Um, I can certainly take care of you if you'd like to order a kit. All right, um, let's see. I'm gonna do the floral one second. I'm gonna do the gray, basic gray one first. Wendy, just popping in. Laura, good morning. Um, all of your kits, I generally package in our clear cello medium envelopes. And that's partly because uh, if your envelope gets wet during mailing, now it shouldn't, your actual kit package will be protected with a cello envelope. And you can reuse these envelopes. You can actually mail them uh, with the Avery white address labels if your card is thin or use them to store your idea file cards in. All right, Sandra from Lake and Hills, Illinois. Hello, neighbor. I'm not too far from you. I'm close to Madison, Wisconsin. Um, let's see, let's go through some other things on my workstation here and then I can go to um, go to the instructions for assembling your kit. I use the Lovely and Lasting stamp set for my sentiments. And also in your kit, you would have received a punch shape from the uh, Lasting Label Punch. This is a coordinating bundle for this year. It's bundle price. You get 10% off each individual item. So make sure that you use that item number for the bundle if it's sold as a bundle so you get the 10% off. If you enter item numbers individually for each item that is sold as a bundle, you won't get that 10% off. So just be aware of that. And then one last thing, while I am grabbing my paper trimmer, so grab your paper trimmer if you're crafting along with me. One last thing about the bundle pricing, zero bundles from the annual catalog that are carrying over into the new catalog, zero bundle pricing carries over. They're carrying over the individual um, items, but not that bundle pricing. So be sure if you see any bundles that you like to order them while they are 10% off. All right, now you're gonna grab your paper trimmer and I need to try to get this in the Vicki, good morning from Chicagoland. Again, I am near Madison, Wisconsin. I actually live in Sun Prairie, which is a northern burb of Madison. When I moved to Sun Prairie a long time ago, there was space between Madison and Sun Prairie, but now it's just all built up with shops and houses. All right, basic gray card base. In your kit would be the punch shape, the lasting label punch. Some of this natural ribbon, we're gonna cut that down. A circle punch, now I used, I'm pretty sure it's the one and three circle punch, but the layering circles dies, which is retiring, also has that size. Included in your kit will be a piece of this backer sheet. Now, some of your backer sheets will have different amounts of writing. We're gonna cover that up. So what I did was I cut down our backer sheets. They're 12 by 12. All of our designer series paper comes um, backed with these backer sheets. And they're great for these quilting type assembly techniques. So I'm just gonna flip that over and assemble on the white side. You got a piece of this pattern paper. Now let me look at my notes. And actually this piece, if you're crafting along with us, Oh, it is three, three by five inches. And then this piece is slightly larger. It's three and a quarter by five and a quarter inches. So it'll fit on a card front. And then you can decide which pattern you want up. Let me pull the card in. <clears throat> Here's this card with the brown up and with the petal pink stripe up. So different looks. Again, you've got different patterns in your pack. <clears throat> Excuse me. So be aware of that. You might not have the pattern I have. All right, now grab your pattern paper. This actually measures four and a quarter by six inches. You're gonna take it and cut it. Oh, where's my, let me flip this around because I actually cut down here. We're gonna take it and cut it into one and a half pieces. <clears throat> And so you should be getting four pieces out of this. Now, if you're just using from your scrap, then you just need some rectangles that are similarly sized. If they're the same size, you'll get a more pleasing starburst pattern. But if they're slightly different, that is fine too, because you need smaller pieces on the outside of the starburst. Now there's that, and I'm gonna cut the foil Foil measures four and a quarter by six. Again, cut it at one and a half. Now this pattern, or this 
technique is part of my, I coordinate a couple of Google Doc collabs with other demonstrators across the world. And each month we feature a different simple specialty samples it's called. So this was the April feature. And we have, I'm pretty sure, 17 different samples in that Google Doc. And if you purchased these Starburst kits in the mail for me, you would have received that PDF in your email inbox. So if you purchase the kit, if you haven't received an email, check your spam folder, check your junk, look around. I try to send those within a day or two or three of when you make a kit purchase. And I also try to like to make take my weekends off. So I'm in the stamp room during the week, Monday through Friday. Won't tell you my hours, but it's long. Um, so I try to take my weekends off. So if you order on the weekend, you might be getting communications from me on Monday morning. All right, now you have all of these little strips. You're gonna cut them into triangles. So um, line up the bottom left-hand point and the top right-hand point. Hold it down and cut into triangles. So you'll need four triangles for, per card. And four of these. And I'm four, four of the foil triangles. I'm gonna cut all four of my foils right now. And you know what? I might just grab my my floral pattern. Hi Susie from Washington, thanks for joining. Mickey from Nevada, hello. I see your little icon there. It looks like a mountain, really tiny on my screen. Mountain with maybe some clouds in the sky. It's probably a mountain though, right? Ellen, Helen, sorry. Um, glad to see my tutorial. Oh, um, Helen B, is that in response to my video title? So I titled my video, Happy Three Anniversary to Us. It has been three years since One of a Kind has been hosting us in their private Facebook group. And since I mentioned I do those Google Doc collabs each month, if you're a customer of mine, you've probably received those in the past. So one is that sp simple specialty samples. I do an assorted one each month. It's just assorted card fronts, portrait style card fronts. I do a fancy fold one and I do a bundle bonus one. So we focus on one bundle a month. I can certainly find one of those tutorials and email one to you if you're a customer of mine. Um, and if you're not a customer of mine, you'll need to private message me uh, with your email address and ask for my freebie tutorial for the three year anniversary. Or you can go to my blog at superawesomestamper.com and click on uh, the contact button and let me know you heard about my freebie tutorial in this private Facebook group and you would like the third anniversary tutorial free. Um, again, I need your email address for that. I can't magically zip it over the area rise without your email address. Okay, now I have all of your pieces here. And I need to find the other pieces. Here, let's bring this one in. So if you demonstrate, fellow demonstrators out there, you know one side of your workstation is a mess because you're constantly throwing things to the other side. Today I'm kind of working both sides. So, all right, so here's our card base. And find this backer sheet. Again, varying amounts of pattern paper. Oh, and one thing I didn't do ahead of time, but yours is marked. If you're doing this on your own with my instruction, you're going to mark your halfway point, which in my case is at two and a half. So yours, gosh, you know, I don't know if I marked yours or not now. Um, but take your backer sheet, mark it at two and a half on the top and the bottom. Our Stampin' Up grid paper is perfect for this because there's that two and a half line at the top and the bottom. That will help you center your starburst pattern a little easier. And by that I mean I'm gonna line up my first triangle along those two and a half lines. And then I just line up every triangle after that, every other. And why don't I, since Here's this one with that up. Why don't I do the note paper up first? Yeah, that'll work. 
I don't know, we may like that. We may not. Um, foil here. Remember, I only want to use four of those foils for this one. Oh, there should be another one somewhere. Hmm. Not sure. Uh, and then this one right here. So what you're doing is making sure you're covering up all of your points. Now I don't have, oh, here's the other foil. Now I don't have this point covered up, but I can cover it up with this scrap. So part of the reason is because I decided to, let me do this again. I decided to have the opposite pattern up. I'm gonna have the notebook paper up there. And the foil starts there, there. And it doesn't really matter um, which side you have up. Just lay them out first before you start gluing so you know what you're, what you're going for. Again, any size rectangles will work. Oh, and I did a squirrel. I was gonna cut the floral down, um, but I will come back to that. And there's a tip on that floral one. And I'm either moving my mat or my my camera stand is moving. Okay, so here is the pattern I want. I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna have that note paper up. <gasps> Susan says my PDFs offer great ideas. Thank you, Susan, for the compliment. We do put a lot of work into those. I am the lead admin or the co-admin for a lot of them, so I do put extra effort into it. And that's why I told you in the beginning of this video that I won't tell you how much extra effort I put in because it's long. We put in long days. This is my only job, so I try to work it as a job and I'm down here in the stamp room because there's just a walk from upstairs to downstairs. It's easy for me to get to work. All right, now I'm going to caution you against grabbing your liquid glue because I have a sample to show you. If you get liquid glue on your hands and then you need to touch your foil, see this one? That foil does not look nice at all because I have glue on there. And I don't think I noticed that I, um, until after I assembled it all. Or if I noticed it on the first one, I just said, forget it. This is going to be a sample to show you what not to do. So I would caution if you're using your foil on this on card to set your liquid glue aside and instead use a tape runner. Where's my tape runner? Or your tear and tape or even glue dots because there's no way you're going to get your, your tape runner adhesive on your hands. And just run as close to the edge as possible. You want to make sure you cut your corners, especially or put adhesive on the bottom left and right hand corners because you're going to be using tiny pieces of tiny pieces of cardstock or foil on those bottom two corners. So that should be enough. And then you take your little marks and what I'm doing is I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, lining up on my pencil marks, the flat part. I'm going to get as close as I can because you know, I even though I'm using scraps, well, you're not using scraps if you purchased a kit from me. I want to make sure I use as much as I can. There. So I'm lining up the top and it's not hanging over there. And then the next one, you got to make sure you cover that top corner. And I always actually find it easier if I put my finger on that top corner and then I can feel the pattern paper. And I kind of force it over a little bit because we were going to cut that off. We're going to flip it over and cut it off. Okay, so now it's hanging over the back side. Next one is a foil piece. Again, make sure you cover that back up. Over here, I'm going to line it up with my thumb, the pattern paper, and the backer sheet, and just press it up. And line it up with the foil. So I can tell you the reason why I first grabbed the liquid glue is because you always have a few seconds to move your pattern paper in place. Liquid glue works great if you don't get it on your fingers. Okay, I'm going to cover that up. The tape is working great. Great, Susan. Yeah, tape, tape is the easiest thing. Cover it up. Now you quilt those out here. We'll love this technique. Uh, 
because it's cutting things apart. Okay, now I don't have this covered, but I need some foil. So instead of using a full piece, I'm gonna cut this off. I'm gonna cut around, so flip it over. And okay, I'm gonna swap out scissors. This is my Stampin' Up! Paper Snips. We don't sell long handled scissors, but the long, not the long handled, the long bladed scissors is best for this technique because you can cut in straight lines a little easier and keep control of it. So flip it over, cut all those pieces off. This is where I said it gets kind of uh, irritating is because you're creating smaller pieces from larger pieces, but you're using most of it up. Okay, now I've got this corner right here to cover with some foil. And I can probably use this piece. Yep. All right, now I mentioned this was part of my monthly simple specialty samples PDF tutorial bundle. The lady that wrote this tutorial started with DSP that was four and a quarter by six inches. Now I would not have selected that uh, cut size four and a quarter because then I could only get four cards easily out of one pattern paper pa sheet because it's 12 by 12. So if you're doing this on your own or um, making future cards, I have the floral pattern we are going to cut from a four by six piece because I accidentally cut some at four by six initially until I realized they were the wrong size. All right. So this looks okay like that, but it also already, it looks better with the mat. Now I gotta find the mat piece. Renee says happy anniversary with oak. Yep, one of a kind. Um, you are welcome. We have been here, most of us have been here for the full three years. I was actually the vendor in the Madison show in and out ever since it had started. Gosh, it would it be. Well, my 20 year anniversary as a demonstrator is in August. So the vendor show in Madison is probably uh, started around that time. Remember I was one of the first vendors. Okay, so I'm gonna have the pattern pink, petal pink up. I like that better now that I've got the notebook paper up. Although I like that too. I'm gonna have the, that pattern up. Gonna make a quick decision here. And this DSP piece is three and a quarter by five and a quarter. All these mention measurements are in that PDF tutorial that I mentioned that I emailed everybody who purchased a kit. I do have kits available on my blog at superawesomestamper.com. Once they sell out, I remove that PayPal button, but I'm happy to make kits. I've got three kits actually ready for mailing that would go in the mail on Monday because mail's already been picked up here. Okay, that'll go in the front. Front on the top. Now, you can orientate your card horizontal or vertical, however you like. Kind of depends on your sentiment. But I think I will do uh, vertical just for, uh, so you can see the difference. Now, so I use the lovely and lasting DSP. Susie K, pretty. Thank you, Susie. Now, the Abigail Rose Designer Series paper is mostly browns and grays. Not sure I really liked browns and grays. Um, you know, the back side of this was the notebook, but a lot of the patterns, they meant for you to color. I'm not a huge coloring fan. I will do it. I prefer two-step stamping. So this wasn't my favorite pack, but some of the colors, like I really like this gray. The initial one that I showed in the package, I really like these gray leaves with the brown flowers. I love Early Espresso. Okay, so there's that. The lovely and lasting stamp set has got a few sentiments that'll fit inside that circle. Happy birthday, the thinking of you just fits and thank you. So I always look for stamp sets that I have multiple sentiments. Uh, uh, oh, let's see, before I do that, um, multiple sentiments and multiple fonts. This just fits right in the center. Okay, now you've got more 
ribbon. I always usually, I'm very strategic when I package my kits. I'm sure all the vendors are. But I package usually enough ribbon to fit that way. And it's usually about five to five and a half inches. So you've got more than what I included on my card. You just want enough to see it peeking out. You could certainly have it the full length. I, I don't like that because the full length because it's not forcing my eye to the sentiment. It's like two things on the card, the big block in the back and then just that. Although we're gonna add the butterflies. I still like this with a little bit of ribbon on each side because it forces your eye to the sentiment. Use the extra ribbon somewhere else or in the inside of the card. Okay, there's that. So tape runner for that will work. And then don't do what I just did. I, I actually touched my foil paper. Try not to touch your foil paper. It is very susceptible to glues, um, fingerprints, nails, anything to mar it up, it will mar. Oh, and because of that, it is very pretty when you put it through your embossing machine and embossing folders. I don't think I marred any. I was pretty careful when I, I'm keeping storing these. I don't have any marred, so anyway. All right, I did pop that up on dimensionals, but today I think I'm just gonna go simple. Make the Postal Service love me and do flat. And then you would have received, oh, I gotta move that over. This is not perfectly centered. Ooh, that would be driving me crazy. Let me move it over. I can pull that up. Let's move that over a little more. So now their punch is perfectly centered on the ribbon. Okay, you would have received two of these brushed brass, brass butterflies, and that's because my stock was just running out. So I did include some other embellishments in your kit to kind of make it up for it, because I tend to uh, include strips of uh, embellishments in your kit. But in your case, in this kit's case, I just included the small one in the large one, but this is how they come in a package. So large one at the bottom, small one at the top. And then the inside is always one six of an eight and a half by 11 piece of Whisper right? Marjorie from Sheboygan, you're not too far from me either. I'm near Madison. Nothing on the inside except for the white this time. Although, when you look at the inside of some of these cards, they might be some little special fun things there. Look at this. This one, I put one of the triangles. So all those triangles, I kind of skidded off. Did I skid them off my mat? Yeah, I did. You can add them on the inside. There's one right there with the teacup. That one doesn't have any. Oh, this one does. This one had a, few, a little bit more. So decorate up your inside. Now, I don't know where all my little pieces went, but certainly if there's some larger triangles, you can add them to the inside of your card. All right. Okay, second card. Now, I might not fully assemble, but like I said, this piece is a little bit smaller because I cut some at four by six. So we're just gonna show you what will happen when you have smaller pieces of patterns. You actually cover less on that backer sheet, so I'm cutting it to one and a half. And a few of you might have received pieces that were already cut in rectangles because I would have cut them off my ends of this one. Okay, so I'm gonna, should I try to double them up? And do, no, I'm not gonna do that because they'll probably slip. All right, while I am doing this, if you follow Stampin' Up, you know that we're in the last few weeks of our annual and mini catalog. So items in the re on the retiring list are only available while supplies last. I do have both of those lists posted to my blog. It's the second one down right now, I'm pretty sure. And um, you can place orders through my online store at sjsinks.stampinupnet.net with my host code and you'll receive a Email PDF tutorial if you use that host code on your order. If your order is greater than $150, excluding shipping and tax, you might decide to join my super awesome stampers team for the best benefits. 
Uh, the, first, the greatest one is that you get a discount on all your orders. All right, so I'm going to mark this at the two and a half mark. I've got slightly smaller rectangles because I started with a four inch piece, but you'll see that they still work. Let me grab my, what happened to, here's the gold. That was gold. And I could have included these in your kits, and I might um, if I have people order quite a few this weekend. The four inch ones, orange pattern papers, because you see they, they still work. That's how it would work. All right. Just checking my... Uh, Penny from um, Kenewick, Washington. Welcome. All right. Um, you in your kit, the floral kit, again, assorted patterns, assorted colors. I would have included a piece of this red linen um, ribbon. You would need to tie it into a bow. And let's pull that in. Let's pull this one in so you can see. Oh, and you would have re also received... I tucked in these loose floral embellishments. They're white and yellow. This, those the floral embellishments, they did carry over to the new catalog. Just use a tiny bit of glue on the backside to add them to your project. I did not use them on my project. Although these certainly would look nice. Could have put them down there. Could have put them on the tag. I think I thought of those after I had created all my samples and the marketing stuff. So I just included a few in your kit. Okay. What's the mirror paper, Wendy asks? It is our rose gold paper. And actually, why don't I stop and to a little catalog tour as long as you asked. And show you all the products that I used. And if we have time, I'll come back and finish assembling the kit. All right, so the one product from the mini catalog that you may have been included in your kit is number three, the pastel adhesive back sequins. And those were the th um, three little sequins that I included on that tag. And then from the annual catalog, the supplies that I used on my card would be the stamp set. And again, I can't include stamped images in your kit. Stampin' Up! prohibits that, so that's why you will never receive stamped images in my kit. So I feature heavily everything else, the embellishments, the ribbons, the punches, large pieces of pattern paper. And here's that bundle pricing again that I mentioned. Make sure something is a bundle price, use the bundle item number, because if you use the individual item numbers, you won't get that bundle price. All right, Abigail Rose, I mentioned it was the brown color family. It's up there. I also had some Awash and Beauty kits, and I still have those. And I think on the blog right now, I kind of mentioned it's assorted florals. I've got a few of the teapot teacups that I was going to use on my demonstration, but I decided I did not need to do that because I had plenty of samples in the teapots. Here's the tea boutique. It is a six by six pattern paper pack. So, and it has 12 different um, patterns per pack. So it was more difficult for me to include these in the kits because I could only get one kit per pattern paper. All right, other things that I included. Oh, let's see. Um, let's see here. Wendy, Susie, no, I can't remember who asked about the rose gold foil. Here's the rose gold foil. It's on page 139 of the annual catalog. It has six pieces two each of the three finishes, an iridescent, matte, and metallic. So your kit would have just had one of those options because I thought if you cut them all up and used them on your cards with your own pattern paper, you'd want the same finish uh, to complete your Starburst kits. All right, a few of the embellishments that were included in the kits, um, the brushed brass butterflies, they are carrying over into the new catalog. And I may have included number 11, the Elegant Faceted Gems. And I think that's it. 
you may have included, may have had some opal rounds. So I kind of gave an embellishment pack that coordinated with the pattern paper that you got in your kit. Here's a, a lasting label, um, lovely and lasting bundle again. And then back here, what else did I include in your kit? Essentials tags. Now, I can't remember if that one's carrying over or not. But there is that I used in your floral kit. And I did mention the layering circles. So I used a punch, a retired punch for your circle on the basic gray kit, the Abigail Rose kit. But the layering circles has 16 dies, and I'm pretty sure it had that size that I used. Layering circles is uh, retiring with this catalog. So if that's the dies that you want, make sure you place an order for that. All right, um, we are at 11.20. Let me go through my a list of items to talk to you about while I assemble this card with you. All right, I did mention, somebody asked about the free PDF tutorial that I added in my video description. I decided that I would email a free PDF tutorial to anyone that is on my email list that lets me know they saw this video in the one of a kind group. You gotta send me an email and ask me for that tutorial. If you're not on my email list, you need to contact me and let me know what your email is. You can contact me. <clears throat> so via P personal PM, my personal page, which is how I'm going live right now. For some reason, I couldn't get my business page to hook up and go live. But on my personal page is a link to my business profile, which is super awesome, stamper.com. For super awesome stamper, Shirley Merker, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So um, I am the super awesome stamper and that's kind of the marketing brand that I have that kind of runs through all my social media. So that's how you find me on social media. Um, again, so yeah, if you want that free PDF, I need your email address somehow. You need to let me know what it is and that you saw this video on the one of a kind Facebook page today and are interested in getting that free PDF. And if you are a current customer of mine, you probably already received some of these um, PDFs, but I can find one that you've never gotten. I do keep a list of all of the recipients of my PDFs, so I can go through my spreadsheets and see which one I can email to you. So my PDFs feature the project, usually full, full, um, project photo with the focal point photo and then a supply list with measurements and um, item numbers so that if you want to recreate it you can. All right there is that. Let me check my list here. What else do I need to talk to you about? Oh I mentioned that I am near Madison, Wisconsin. <clears throat> if you ordered through my online store which for new catalog products, for catalog products I should say not kits in the mail, uh, you should be receiving a catalog from me. Again, my ordering cutoff kind of varies. I'd, usually it's a $50 order in the catalog year and then you'll get a catalog from me. But if you don't get a catalog from me and you are local to me, you can pick up a catalog from my front doorstep. Again, I am in my stamp room most days. I try to take the weekends off. Because I had to do something else with my life, right? Like baking. If you follow along on my business page, I share my baking fun. My bees, my honey bees are going to be coming in pretty quick. I'm pretty sure my hives, uh, the hives did not overwinter. I do have a blog, or I do have a YouTube channel for my honey bees as well. It's called The Bee Log with BBS Bees and Super Awesome Beekeeper. No, Super Bee Shirley is my... Um, YouTube channel for the bees. Anyway, I digress. Uh, I was just editing those videos this morning. Um, oh, now I digress and I kind of forgot what I was saying. Oh, the catalog pickup. Yeah, so catalogs do cost me money. So that's why if I can only offer them free if you purchase catalog products through my online store. All right, and that helps me pay for those catalogs. Um, as since Stampin' Up! is retiring items, I do have 27 retiring stamp sets slash bundles that are going to be going on my retiring sale soon. I can't officially resell those until the catalog 
the current catalog actually, uh, the sales period is over. So May 2nd, I am able to start reselling those items. People that are on my email list will get first dibs on those items uh, through some Google photos. And then I will post them in my customer Facebook group as well. Oops, I went off my card there. That's why we got the mat. So we got some uh, glue on my mat. So if you're interested in purchasing retired items from me, and you're emailing me for that free PDF tutorial, you can also tell me if you want to be included on that retired sale, pre-sale. All right. Um, oh, before I log off, I did. Let me see. Okay, there's that. Here's this. You would have received in your kit a little strip of white for the sentiment. And of course, everything is a jumble here. Here it is. It's probably larger than the a tag because I wanted you to custom cut it off. But I stamped cheers on it using the uh, Granny Apple Green ink pad, added the sequins or whatever kind of embellishments you have that coordinate with your paper, and then the ribbon on top. All right, so before I sign off, gosh, 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 fabulous. The one thing I can share with you that's new from the new catalog is showing you this fabulous pattern paper. Let's get some stuff out of the way. And it is the, no, it's not the Storybook Gnomes. It is the Fresh as a Daisy pattern paper. This pattern pack is in the new catalog, which goes live May 2nd. I will be featuring this paper in my next Kiss in the Mail, which is not posted yet. And the kits will most likely not start shipping until the first to second week in May because I need to get pattern paper in stock. I could only purchase two packages because that's what they limit us to in the pre-order. But here is the card that I will, one of the cards that I will feature. It features the soon to be retiring sunflowers, which is right here. Celebrate Sunflowers is going to be retiring. So that's going to be one of the kits. I can't decide if I'm going to do two sunflowers or if I should also feature a mini daisy. And then all of these um, leaves from the Forever Fern, the Forever Flourishing, I can certainly cut a lot of fun leafy patterns with these die cuts. These three items are also retiring. So you can add a comment. Let me know if you want two sunflowers in the next kits in the mail or a sunflower and want something with the forever fern and the daisy punch. So that is that kind of sneak peek. Again, that should be posted in the next few days, probably early next week, because I would like to get outside today and do some yard cleanup. All right, now what am I looking for here? Things got a little jumbled. This one goes here, there we go. All right, so front and back side right here, this is the Fresh as a Daisy new. That's gonna be featuring in my uh, kits in the mail. And then I also got on my pre-order these adhesive back solid gems in the new colors. Now, new colors, new color names are going to be escaping me, but there's this mauve, there's a blue, where is this? That's the Starbuck Nolan Packer sheet. Um, there are, I think, 12 colors. Uh, so there is a color refresh also going on, and that information is, is on my blog as well, in a blog post, separate blog post. Got several things up there right now. Current kits in the mail. Fun fold, uh, fancy fun folds will be, will be restarting in May, so that's one tutorial a month in a, a super fancy fold, which you need photos and um, verbiage to, to complete. Um, what else is up there? The... Current catalog retiring list is up. The color refresh is, is up. I'll have coming soon my retired sales stuff. What else? Current kits in the, or the next kits in the mail will be posted next week. And I think that's it. Does anybody else have any quick questions before I sign off? I got probably 30 seconds. Jeanette, thank you for, so much for the compliment. So pretty. Love the gems. I know I usually load up on all the new stuff when we get it. This is the new colors. Oh, Susan says she'd like two sunflowers, but she also likes the ferns. All right, Susan, we'll see what I can stuff in my kit. You know, 
Like I said, I like to make it close as close to the two ounces as I can and keep it less than a quarter inch so I don't have to pay any more shipping on that. And I think that's it. Check out my blog. It's super awesome. Stamper.com. Place your order using this host code. And if you want the demo discount, contact me and we can discuss the best time for you to join my super awesome Stampers team. And yes, Penny, happy anniversary to us. Ken Oliver is next. We'll stamp with you soon. Bye.